we are down to the last layer, right? The layer, you know, layer one, two, and three, or in this case, the access layer, however you want to say it. The access layer is really just an extension of the distribution layer, period. Uh, all the, this is what they consider the work group access layer. Uh, you can have access list here. Uh, network services are controlled here. All right, you have intro VLAN going on here. It doesn't necessarily have to be a switch. It could be another router. It could be three million more devices that are down here. Yeah, definitely speed is an issue anywhere within your network. So not just the core router has to have the Metro E or greater. It could, you can have that down here. All right, but normally we associate it where these are all our computers going back and forth, your LAN segments that 80% of all network traffic should be local to your particular segment. That way you don't bog down the network by having to leave your segment and taking up extra bandwidth. But again, this is a layered approach, a layered approach. It could be three layers, it could be four layers, five layers, 10 layers, it could be 20 million devices, it could be just these three devices. But what you need to think about, access layer, again, line segments, work group access, you still have policies going on there as well. What you need to remember is, as far as the test is concerned, yeah, core distribution access, CDA, core is the most important, going from one side to the next, distribution is where you do all your routing and decisions where you need to send this, your access layer is just an extension of the distribution layer. That is it, that's as hard as it gets. As far as you, as an individual, when you're deciding to create, or designing, I should say, designing your network, you need to make sure that one, every part of your network should have speed, meaning whether it be you know uh, gigabit Ethernet within your LAN segments, uh, then you have you know uh, as far as you know Metro E going through your WANs or greater for today's technology. Again, depending on your enterprise and redundancy, 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 redundancy. They even have redundancy protocols now in this particular 200-120 test. So redundancy is something that Cisco is really telling everybody, hey, it's important to have redundancy. So the same thing goes here, with, especially with your core network. You need that redundancy. But you need redundancy everywhere. You need speed everywhere. You need security everywhere as far as access list or you know, policy-based routings or whatever it is that you're doing. You need to set up security. But Again, they give us a layered model, a conceptual blueprint of how things should be, of how it could be more efficient. But you need to decide that based on your enterprise, your particular network. If you just have one router and you know one switch and then you know five computers, this may not, you know, this may apply, may not apply. That's your one router. You don't want to bog that down with a whole bunch of things, but guess what? Unless you're using a layer three switch, guess who's doing the inter VLANs? If you have VLANs in your company, that particular router. So you got to make sure that if you're using, let's say, Comcast cable, for example, or you're using some other manufacturer to get you from point A to point B, that you have high speed. So you see, things can change back and forth. Not everything is cookie cutter. You don't go to one network and the next network is identical. That does not exist. It does not exist. Every network is different. Every network uses different devices. And you can go on one network and they have Cisco devices, which is what they should be using. You can go to the next network and they can be using F5 routers. You can go to the next network, they can be using Juniper routers. You can go to the next network, they can be using Acatel routers. And it goes on and on and on and on. The concepts that they teach you with these models, and we still got one more model to go, which is the TCP IP model, all right, is just that. It's a later approach to let us know, hey, this is what's going on. This is how you should set it up. That's all. That's all it is. That's why in the examination, in your certification exam, they don't go crazy when they start asking you questions about these models. They want just the basic foundations. Where this is the OSI, you have seven layers and what works on each layer more or less. The three layer model for Cisco, what are the three layers? And then you have your TCP IP model, which is four layers, okay? And we'll just discuss that in a little bit. But again, don't go insane with it. Understand the basics of it and that's it.
That's all you need to know when you get to your certification exam. Once you get to the real world, then everything is a little, everything's going to be different because everybody uses different standard operating procedures. Not everybody follows the models that they're supposed to follow. The real world is a whole nother story. But if you got a good understanding and a basic foundation, everything else will come in very easily. All right. So again, this is your Cisco three-layer model. Yes, you need to know it. Just understand the basics and you'll be all right. I'll see you in the next session.